More of your phone. More of your phone calls coming up. Wait, what's wrong? Is it is it is the fan here just like to blow my hair back? Yes, that's like kind of a. Yes, you've done photo shoots before yeah. where your hair blows back, like yeah. Stevie Nicks in a music video. That's what I feel like right now. All right, all right. let me intro you first. Melissa Starr, host of NFL Network's First on the Field Sunday mornings, seven a.m. Eastern, with Ladanian Tomlinson, Sterling Shark, and uh, Sharp, and Michael uh, Lombardi, <laughs> Sterling Shark. <laughs> what time did you get up on Sunday? Well, I know you've already told me that I look tired. Um, so, uh, I guess too early. That is the first thing you said to me when I walked in. I The guys over here all have their hands on their faces. and That's uh, not a good yeah. opening line. Well, no, not really. Well, I was going to give you an honest line instead of lie to you. But, okay, so we got up at uh, 345. Who did? Well, I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I had to get so there at 4 okay. for hair and makeup, which takes, you know, a little while. Well, it, how long does it take for you to get bring it all together here? Um... About an hour and a half. I'm relying on other people. It takes me two hours, so <laughs> that's, you're, you're a half hour ahead of me. But what is it when you're working with these guys, though? Uh-huh. What's the role? What's the what's the goal for you as the host to, to get out of these goofballs? These guys. Well, I'm actually co-hosting with Sterling. Sharp. Okay. So he's like he's out of the analyst role. I mean, it kind of goes back and forth between the two, but this is his debut as a, as a host. Um, you know, we just want to we we want to have fun. We want to keep it moving. It's early in the morning. Have have a good time. Get cover the games. Figure out what's going on that day. Get some insider information. I mean, they've got a lot. These guys are. I mean, LT just retired. Yeah. Uh, he he. These guys get their perspective on things as a player. I mean, I feel like viewers really want to hear from these guys as a player what it's like, and they can offer that. But if you're, sometimes you'll hear information, and then you're not sure if you're able to go with that information because you, they just talk sometimes behind the scenes. You mean off air? Yeah. Yeah. Have you found yourself where you're not sure if you're able to bring something up or, you know, you got to be careful protecting them? Well, I mean, I feel like they probably wouldn't. I mean, we definitely sit around and talk a, a lot, you know, in these production meetings or we'll go out to dinner. We, we, we all went and played golf together. We had this big bonding experience. I mean, Sterling loves golf. This is, this is what this man does. He plays you know, three rounds of golf a day. Um, so... So we talk a lot off air, but I don't think they'd say anything that we couldn't use. I mean, I often find like when I'm talking, I was talking to Bob Kraft this week and we're just kind of talking and he's like, well, wait, is this for on air or off air? <laughs> you know, how much should I really say right now? But how much do you miss the game considering you did Monday night? How long did you do sideline Monday night? Three years. That was uh, 2000 to 2003. Toughest part of doing sideline was what? You know, it's. You do so much preparation. You talk to all these players, all the coaches and everything, and then it's so limited in what you can get across on the air. It's just 25 seconds. You know, I mean, I want to I be on. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get on the air. You have so much information. You're excited about it, and you want to convey it, but you have in-between plays four times a game. So I felt like that, that, that role, while it's great, and um, it's evolved through the years, and I, I think the women who are doing it – are doing a great job, but um, it's, it's a limited role. Why only women, for the most part, doing that job? Well, I mean, there, there are some men doing it. But, but we were talking about this the other day, that there's certain roles. Do you get the role because you're good looking? Right. Do you get the, men and women? Right. But do you get the job? And when, when you know you got the job because you're good looking, what does that do to you when you're then trying to prove that you're more than just that? Right. I mean, I think I struggled with that a little bit because I got the Monday night job when I was uh, 26 years old and replaced Leslie Visser. And it was this huge thing, you know, Stark 26 replaces Visser 46, you know, and and she was the proven veteran. And so I think I tried to downplay looks, you know, kind of try to be one of the guys, try to kind of fit in. But I think you couldn't just do this job based on, I mean, you have to be the complete package. I mean, does it help if you're attractive and good looking? Sure. The television's a visual medium. That's why you're on radio i mean this is on tv okay <laughs> um where are the cameras i'm just kidding yeah, by the way yeah. yeah bring the cameras yeah, back out. yeah uh so i think i think you can't just be attractive it's part of the package and there, i mean who's to say that an attractive woman isn't smart i know but i think sometimes the, the prettier a woman is the less we're listening to information it's distracting well we we just and, and maybe that's just guys and right. how we view it that you're you're looking and not listening. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that though? That you know you could say the most important thing. But, but I mean, maybe- I, I feel like I don't know. All I can do is gather as much information as I can, talk to as many people, and be the reporter that I feel like that I am. 
and try and convey that. That's all I can do. I mean, I can't be thinking about that, but I think... Because I want to be prettier. I mean, I really do. I can tell. I really... I can tell. I, I wish it didn't come down to all this wealth of information I have. Right. I wish I was just eye candy. Right. I mean, I think... I think uh, there's no, obviously guys, most of the viewers, you know, on NFL Network or ESPN, any of these stations obviously are guys. So I, I mean, but a lot of people on TV are attractive. I don't think it's just women. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of unattractive people as well. Yeah. Now that I think about it. <laughs> Melissa Stark from the NFL Network joining us. Look at these. This, look these at questions this. always make me uncomfortable. I'm sweating over here. Not know, only, not only is it like 120 <laughs> degrees in here, but I mean, you just like hit me right. I thought we were going to like ease into this thing. Oh, no. Play a little pool or. Well, we can play pool if you yeah. want to, but I had to ask questions. I'm a jerk. Remember, I'm not good looking. Right. I have to ask good questions. Yeah, to get your credibility. Which one of my uh, Danettes could you see being on TV? Just based on it, looks. Aha. Uh -huh. So Seton is here, Paulie, McLovin in the back, and Fritzy. Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> this is a, that's so awful that you're asking no, me No, it's this. not. They, I they can handle them on, it. I could see all, they're all on TV. I know, but I, I don't have anybody else. We've I, been through this at least a dozen times, so don't worry about yes. it. And people choose? Yes. Hell yes, they choose. Sometimes they'll just say none of them. I mean, I got it. I mean, I mean, Fritzy, Fritzy, like, you know, that cute, like, Balding really? head and the whole thing. Balding? Like, I think balding? <laughs> I will take that. Yeah. You, you I will. will accept that. A little powder us. in the front, <laughs> and he's good to go. Do you know how creepy he is? No. We've been emailing back and forth. Perver he back he's back. perverted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just... I'm going to... Be careful. What was my email address? Was any of our communication inappropriate at any time? It was not. Time? It was not. Yeah. It was yeah. very professional. Did he hug? Did he hug you when you came in? You didn't. We didn't even do the hug. No. Okay, that's good. Because that they usually... They couldn't get past you. I mean... Oh, no, no. That was... That, oh, okay. That's when he'll give you more than a three-second hug. Oh, he'll linger. With sound effects. Okay. You'll, will you hug me on the way out? Yeah. He, he doesn't like when, like, we've had, like, supermodels and different uh, women come in to visit us, Brooklyn Decker, Chrissy Teigen, et cetera, and I tend to make a mmm sound, yeah. supposedly, yeah. during the extended yeah. hug. So, Fritzy's the best-looking one. You could see him on TV, is yeah. what you're saying. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's nice. There you go. That's very nice. Very nice. But you work with Dennis Miller when you were doing Sideline. Yes. How yeah. was Dennis Miller? The difference between Dennis off the air and on the air was what? He was the same. He's the same. I mean, I think when you have that kind of personality, um, well, he was the type of person who you could go out to dinner, we could all be sitting there, and he could not say a word the entire night. Or when he was on, he was on, and you couldn't shut him up. Wait, he'd go into, he would be quiet? Yes. He'd be both, depending on what kind of mood he was well, in. Well, comedians are dark. He's though. dark. He's dark. But there was a time when he stole the bus, though, in St. Louis. Oh, the Madden Cruiser? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he just started driving it. He did. I forgot about yes. that. He did. <laughs> we all came out ready to go. Al Michaels yeah. not happy about that. <laughs> and Dennis uh, is, you know, he's commandeered the, the bus, and he's just driving around. He thinks it's funny. He was great. I mean, it was fun. It was, those were a fun couple of years. And then uh, working with John Madden, Eric Dickerson. I talked to Eric this week. Um, what was Madden like? Madden was great. I mean, Madden, uh, you know, we had the Madden Cruiser. So we'd all, we'd travel to, to games and all of our meetings and things on was that. Was there like a that. keg on the Madden Cruiser? There was not, but there could have been. Okay. There should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There should have been. I was been. just curious. I could do, he strikes me as there'd be a lot of beef there and there'd be a keg. No, but there were always, I mean, we hit the hot spots for wh whatever, like cheesesteaks, you know, when you were going through <laughs> Green Bay. He knew all the, you know, the little kind of dives and little spots spots that you would stop kind of across the country and we'd go um he was into food i would say more than drinking why didn't dennis miller work because i don't think he related to your typical football fan i think a lot of the things he used uh went over their heads a lot of the jokes that he used didn't quite uh sit well they they weren't understood it seemed like they had to that al had to try hard as a setup guy for him instead of being able to call a game. Listen, listen, that was when Don Olmeyer came back in and tried, you know, was revamping, recreating Monday Night Football. And, and he tried an idea and, uh, you know, it was fun, and, but it didn't quite pan out the way probably he thought. The show is on every Sunday morning. 7 to 9 Eastern. Out of NFL Films, which is a great place. Have you ever been there? Yeah. 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 I actually auditioned. I wanted to be the voice of NFL Films when they had John Facenda, who has, you know, had the real deep voice. So I went down there and auditioned. Was that before or after you were going to take over, like, on The Price is Right? Or, no, no, was I, that? I already had. The The Price is Right was mine. Oh. Yeah, this was a long time ago. Oh, okay. But I went in there, and they, they put me in a, in a uh, 
you know, this, the, the sound room and put the headphones on and then they had me read a script. And you didn't get it? Obviously not. I'm <laughs> sitting here. But I, I tried. I, and, and then what I did is I tried to do the impersonation of John Facenda. So, the silver and black clad masters of intimidation nearly took Joe Theismann's head off. Now, it's not how I sound, but I thought that that's what they wanted. And then they came in and they said, um, okay, all right. And then I could tell that I didn't get the job. I said, so what did you think? We'll, we'll call you. I never heard we'll from them. We'll call you. Don't <laughs> we'll call, call us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still There's waiting never, for that call. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm now. I'm over it. I think now I'm finally over. It. Right. Yeah. You're but, doing. You're doing okay for yourself yeah. now. Um, but it's it's fun. It's a great show. Like, I Sterling Sharp is such a fun TV personality. And then um, we all went out on the golf course and just had the best time. I mean, LT LT hadn't played in a while. Uh, you know, it's hard to play probably. Yeah. Uh, during the seasons. I think he'll get back to it. We, we kind of like every every shot. Sterling would be like, "Watch your back," because LT would be we'd be so far ahead of him. Watch your back. Uh, so yeah, he's got his cigar out there, and um, it's good. Yeah, it's a boys' club. It's a boys' club, and yeah. I and, and I try to fit in. Uh, you can hang around if you want to. I want to. I Do guess. You, okay. I thought we were going to play some games. We can play games. We can. Are play we finished? Games. Yeah. You didn't even ask about my kid, like my four kids, or well, you what, know. What, what, kind of, who cares about your four kids? Okay. All right. Fine. Good God! Did you ask I, about my four kids? <laughs> no. Wait. I'll have you know. Um, I just want to say when I was deciding whether or not to go, it was a big deal. I was deciding whether or not to go back to work yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. You know, I kind of retired. Yeah. I went to the Today Show and did news and the whole thing. You could be hosting the Today Show now. But this I could, is, but I wanted... Instead of Savannah Guthrie, you would be hosting the Today Show. But but I can't work that hard. You can't kids. work with Matt Lauer? Is that what you're saying? No, it's not Matt Lauer. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay, oh, okay. It's, I, I want to be with these kids. And I didn't even know if I want to come back, but I talked to you. Remember I talked to yeah, you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't, do you remember what you said? Yeah. I don't. What did you say? Oh, you said you should be a host, right? I said you should be doing this. Yeah. Get out. Get away from those kids, man. Yeah. That's what I said. All right. So I get owe out. it all to you. I get owe out. It all to you. Yeah. All right. Back. Ignore your kids and you'll be a star. That's my motto. <laughs> I've been doing it for years. Now I have four new kids right over there, the Danettes. Uh, she's Melissa Stark. The official host is called... Uh, the show. Oh, the show. It's yeah. first on the field. First Sunday mornings. The field. 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern. LaDainian Thompson, Sterling Sharp, and Mike Lombardi. NFL Network, first on the field. Thanks for stopping. We didn't even talk football. I... Well, we sort of did. Okay, that's all right. Why are you... Do you? We can talk next Monday football if you want to. Great, I'm coming back. You want to stay for McLevin's Against the Grain? Sure. It's, re it's football. I mean, it's hardcore football. We will get to your phone calls coming up. You get her in and they don't want to leave, you know? Typical woman. 877-3DP, shall we mail address? It's getting oh, warm in here, I isn't it? I might not be back next Monday. <laughs>